Hi, welcome back to Mill Mill Wood from the beautiful North Wales. Uh, yet again I've been asked to do another commission, another first for me, and it's another wedding's display um, for a chocolate fountain. Uh, rustic style, similar to the magic uh, mirror that I made earlier. Um, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell button, or liking the video, and maybe even sharing it with your friends try and make this very small channel grow. Enjoy the video and I'll see you shortly. Well I've made a start on the display. It's going to have three levels, a base level and then two tiers. Uh, it needs to be a metre in diameter and when I've started I've got a three millimetre hardwood base that I've measured out. I've drawn a circle on it that I've slightly oversized to the metre and then I've cut the four by one or the 100 mil by 25 mil wood uh, to fit. I've obviously cut twice the amount for two levels of the one meter. And now I've cut the wood, I just need to rough it up and sand it down a bit to give it that rustic look. And then I'm going to use the Sasushi Ban method of burning, or my version of Sasushi Ban. And then I'm going to glue the wood onto the hardboard uh, just to get the pattern. And now I just need to rough them up to get them all rustic. I've got a very heavy grit sandpaper. I think this is 40 grit. Just kind of round the edges and uh, give it that farmhouse look before we do the sushi bath. No particular way of doing it and I'm just going to add the offscore into the wood as well. Gonna do this for all the pieces, or I'll come back later. And now for the burning. This is just a, a wheat burner that I'm using. Completed one section that's burning now. <clears throat> That'll be for one of the one meter levels, and I'll carry on and do the other two levels now. I've now glued all the bases, placed them on top of the uh, three millimeter plywood that we drew the circle on, so it roughly covers the circle, and I've glued each edge to each other piece. Um, try and give it some extra strength. I'm now going to put a weight on this and leave it to dry. making the centerpieces now and in order to do that I've cut a 4x1 again or 100mm by 25mm cut it at a 30 degree angle on the sides obviously done the burning just going to glue it together now I'm going to put it on the masking tape and then if you just make sure that each edge is really tight as you place it on the tape and apply wood glue into each joint. Thank you. 
sure you smooth it all over. And you may find that the masking tape doesn't stick very well because of the burning process that you've done. And then all we need to do is roll it into place. tension on the masking tape, squeeze those joints together, making sure your joints are as tight as possible. That should be sufficient to hold it until it dries. Two now, one for each level, and you can imagine these in the center. So let's leave those to dry now, move on to the next step. In order to achieve cutting the circles out, I need to find the center. So I'm taking a straight edge from the highest points, making a mark, likewise on the other side. Mark. I've now, I've now got the center point. I've made a very simple uh, jig for the router, um, some three mil ply hole cut for the blade. I've measured 50 centimeters out, drilled a hole, and then if I just put the screw and the hole in the center that we made earlier. Effectively, we've got a, a type of compass, I guess, for the router. I'm not going to do it in one pass. Find the level, touching the wood, and then I'm just going to blow the router a little bit further down, and that'll be our first uh, pass. Now obviously you've got to be very careful when you're doing this. If I had a workbench it would be a lot easier, um, but I'm going to do it as I am now, and make sure that the router goes in the right direction, so I'll be going clockwise. Just double checking everything's clear, cable's clear, and now gonna start the router off. Okay, so we completed the first pass. I'm now going to row the router blade and complete the next pass. Again, make sure everything's clear.
remove the screw. And if everything's gone to plan, you've now got a one meter circle. Excellent, bit of sand in, and then ready to add the finish. Now the circles or shelves are cut out, I just coated them in Osmo high gloss finish. Uh, one coat on the back, two coats on the front. Just wait for those to dry now before we go on to the next stages. Now the finish is all dry, I'm starting to put the poles in. I'm putting them on the base first. So on the base I've drilled the hole from the top. On the middle shelf I've drilled the holes from the bottom. I've used the force in a bit. I took the pilot hole in the middle all the way through the wood. I'm going to put the dowel in place and pre-drill the dowel in the centre to accept the screw. And then as you can see, there's some wood glue, waterproof wood glue in there. It's a resin type, so that will dry clear. And when I've screwed it in place, I'm just making sure it's a, as upright as possible. I'm not overly concerned because there will be some movement in it when I put the top piece on but as accurate as we can get it. So to fix the centre pieces in place was relatively simple. I've measured from the straight edge to the end, had it aligned with the centre piece. And once I've centred that, I've then marked around the outside, the light pencil, taken it away, drilled some pilot holes which would be in the centre of the wood and screwed from underneath to fix it in place. Then on the lower section, with the dowels in place and the centre piece secured with the screws on the bottom, we place the top piece on top. And I've glued the dowels into the holes that we pre-drilled previously. And I put a screw in the centre of each dowel for extra security. I don't know if you can see that properly. Currently the top's just placed on. Also drilled a large hole in the centre and that's on each level. And that's for a plug and lead to go through down to the bottom level. Um, and that's for the chocolate fountain. And then also there, there needs to be a hole for the LED lights which are going to go underneath. Next step is to put the edging on I think. Secure the top and put the edging on. We've got the top secured on now, and now to look at the edge banding to go around each circle. I've put some banding on, uh, or edging, on the top, the middle. I need to put some on the bottom now. Um, just prior to putting the banding on the bottom, you can just see shooting out on the base there. Uh, I've made some feet out of the same dowel in the centre. I put six feet on. And I'm going to put some edge banding um, on the side there. The feet are just slightly taller than where the edge banding will reach, so that when it's sat on a table, the edge banding is off the table. Now this is a galvanised uh, ribbon. Uh, I believe it's for the builder's trade. So I just need for a starting point here. What I'll do is I'll drill through the material, secure it onto the wood, and I'll slowly rotate the base, fixing the banding as I go, pulling it as close in as I can get it to the material, to the wooden material. It probably won't be perfect because uh, these things never are, but it's going to look really effective. At the end there's going to be LEDs under here, uh, which are going to look brilliant. So I'll crack on with that. Just need to ensure that it's level at the top. We don't want to go into the wood, really. Um, we just want it sufficient enough to get through the back there. the 
band in. I'm just going to secure it with a temporary screw. Now we're just going to rotate the base. And this is only because I've got a restricted space in my workshop. As we rotate the base, I'm going to expand the banding. Sort and level with the top of the base. Again, just rotate. Continue doing this all the way round. I'm not going to film everything and show you all that. And I'll come back to you when I've gone round. We've now come full circle. Uh, we've come to the back of the piece. I want the metal to overlap slightly, uh, so I'm just going to cut it uh, with a. I'm going to use a Dremel grinder. I'm going to cut it slightly longer than it needs to be. I've cut the metal band in now. I'm just going to lay that in place. And with that in place, I'm just going to drill through both strips at the same time. This is giving a bit. The tape's going to hold it together, but you just need to kind of push it so that the holes meet where they were originally. Quite fiddly, I feel there is in the hole on the banding at the back. There we go. And then the temporary screws I'm just going to replace with the screws that are going to stay in, which are round headed screws. And then that's the banding on the base finished. We've got some LED lights that are going to be fitted on the inside wrapped around. Uh, so in order for them to be able to come out, we don't want all the wires everywhere, so it's going to come through the centre column. I just need to drill a hole in the centre column to allow the lights to come out. I'm using one of these small hole cutters. I want it as high up as possible so it's not too obvious. 